for direct laryngoscopy, we were hitting the top of the box and had some limitations for our patient population in, here in the U.S. And it also had um, some fragile seams that we found problematic using, especially on an OR bed. Um, so the COVID guard was developed, and we're here today to go over some user tips and things that we have found helpful when we've been using it here in our practice. In addition to the COVID guard, we're also using the Neptune suction uh, that are very common in all of our ORs here. Uh, things that you're going to need is a Neptune smoke evacuator OPA filter. You're also going to need just a standard suction tubing and a five-in-one tubing connector. Place it in the port and then attach the suction tubing to the five in one. Um, next, you're going to tape the tubing to the top of the box. And it, it doesn't matter really where you tape it, just as long as you tape it up high and have it have the suction somewhere close to the face. To use the Neptune, you are going to hit the evacuate smoke button, then hit the on, and make sure that the power is to 100. It autos to 40%, but go ahead and increase it up to 100. Also use a 1010 drape by 3M, and what we're going to use this for is just to cover the um, holes at the front of the COVID guard to create a seal. You can again put this on prior to the patient coming um, to save time. Once it's taped, just roll it up, add some tape, and you're ready to go. Okay, we just put the drape on. We wanted to cover a few more things to set up before your patient gets in the room. We are using, for cost purposes, a trash bag to make our seal. So it's just our regular standard OR trash bag. It is just prepped and ready to go across the top. Kind of tucked in so getting your patients away when they scoot over to the bed. Our suction is on, our mask straps are ready. Monitors are on the bed, and lights will be pretty. Then our patient can roll into the room. They have their patient mask on. They move over to the bed. It's time to put monitors on. You can put your mask straps on with your oxygen. If you don't have mask straps, we like poor man's mask straps as well. Tree holder place. Oxygen with. Tighten everything down. You can do that again. 
it's really beneficial to have someone helping you at this point to get the patient in position. Down under the unit on this side, wide scopes coming off the end. And here, we like to make a little, kind of a shelf, so that you have a little workspace on the patient's chest at the end for excavation, keep um, everything contained in your bag. After your little shelf is made, tape the drape down across your patient's chest just to get a good seal, and tape where you feel it's gonna be best for the surgery that you're doing. If they're working up high, take it higher. If you have more space and things at high, you take it lower. Okay, at this point we have taped across the patient's chest. We think it's important to just tape to the device so that in a case of emergency, everything can be removed quickly, that you're not taping down to the bed, that this remains easy to remove in the case of some kind of emergency that you need to reach a patient. Um, now we need to poke holes because it is a, a sealed trash bag. Um, you just pinch it up and do a quick clip with the scissors, makes a nice hole. And arms in. And however, you know, get yourself comfortable however you need it. The 1010 drape that we had um, taped up can be pulled down whenever you're comfortable. If you're ready to, um, if you want to go through your whole intubation first and pull it down at the end, it has a good seal um, once it's down. We also think at this point, it's important to go ahead and turn your suction on, the Neptune suction. Um, suction with the smoke filter or you forget to turn it on, you still have good containment of COVID. You just um, are not suctioning it out to the unit. So if you don't have these, this is still containing everything in one space. You probably need to be more careful at the end, removing everything and keeping it contained in one space. All right, set and ready to go for intubation. More tips. Um, ET tube we place on the patient's chest with the oral airway. It's ready to go. The suction I'm going to move and have more readily available, ready to grab. And make sure I have enough length on my glide scope. Additionally, you um, have left enough slack in your bag that you could have a helper still come in and reach in and do five point pressure. It can help with jaw lift, whatever else you might need help and assistance without um, contaminating with someone else. You feel like everything is very well contained at this point. Okay, we'd like to show a little about the, the workspace inside inside the device. We've made this little lip that we keep referring to here. And we think this little shelf lip is important to help um, contain your droplets in one space so you're not cross-contaminating everything. And the bag we think is important after you use your glide scope, you know, just pop it off and, and put it in the back. Um, the mask in the back. Um, the ET tube after, or the oral airway if you've used it in the bag. Ex after excavation in the bag. And everything can be contained in this space. Even the trash. You don't want things coming in and out of your unit and increasing your aerosolization and your contamination. All right, time for excavation. Um, your paint mask is still in. Have it ready on the patient's chest. Um, we are ready to excavate. Excavate. Two in your handy dandy bag. Up to the mask. And all set. Next, we'll show you how after your 20 minute excavation, you've got your suction going and everything is settled. And next, we'll show you how we're taking the whole unit off. We just excavated our patient. The breathing oxygen. Uh, our 20 minute time has passed and uh, it is now time to exit the OR. So we have found that it is really best to just untape, loosen everything, and move the patient out of the unit while it's still standing. And um, then you can use the bag to put all of your equipment into after you've moved the patient out. So just move things away as you normally would to move the patient over. all of your pieces that you can drop into the trash as you pull this out. Last few tips we've got 
slow, whatever you need to do to minimize that risk. Second, the uh, positioning has been an issue for some people, some cases. If you're going prone, obviously you may have to remove the shield. Um, at the end of the case, put it back on for excavation. Um, Stage and downward would be an issue. Lateral, you could still keep the patient where you can turn lateral. It depends on your surgeon and your whatever you can do to meet the needs. And we also have noticed uh, because it's plastic, sometimes you'll get a glare from the overhead lights. Um, one tip that we have found, if you could turn off the, over the OR lights and position them above you to minimize the glare from the overheads below. It depends on where your lighting is in the OR. We haven't had an issue, but we haven't had it reported. Thanks for watching over our tips for the COVID guard. We helped develop this with International Biomedical and um, we don't profit off of this product. We just produced it in the hopes that it would help to make everyone safer. You guys stay safe.